in the original experiment instead of slit a young used holes so initially it was called a young's a double hole experiment this is a very historical experiment and it was a very decisive experiment as it gave a death blow to the theory given by newton which was based on particle nature of light now this experiment proved beyond doubt and that light has wave nature now this experiment of interference consists of a light source and the light source is monochromatic and we make a use of two long and narrow slits and these slits we are calling by s1 and s2 and then we have a screen separated at some distance the young's arrangement is shown on the screen s is representing the monochromatic source s1 s2 representing two long and narrow slit and then we have a screen at the separation of capital d from the plane of slits the separation between slit s1 and s2 is taken as a small d and our monochromatic source is placed symmetrically with respect to s1 and s2 as we have discussed earlier this method uses a division of wave front to obtain two coherent sources now here s1 and s2 are at same distance that is placed symmetrically with respect to monochromatic source so there will be no phase difference that is s s1 is equal to s s2 so s1 and s2 will be part of same wave front and these two parts will be coherent throughout the experiment therefore we get a sustained interference as we have already discussed for sustained interference sources must be coherent now here before we enter into analysis of this experiment we need to go for path difference calculation we have seen how to calculate a path difference and path difference calculation will help us to know what are the points of constructive interference what are the points of a destructive interference the whole information of interference pattern that is redistribution of energy will be obtained through path difference analysis so let's go slowly into this very famous experiment now here if i consider any general point p on the screen now to calculate path difference here we will have only geometrical path difference now it is very clear from the geometry of the arrangement and that waves from s2 will travel longer distance compared to waves from s1 therefore path difference at point p can be simply written as delta x is equal to s2 p minus s1 p further let us assume that the angular position of uh, the point under consideration is theta and we consider a reference line as the line bisecting s1 and s2 as the reference line we are measuring the angle theta with respect to this line and we say the angular position of the point p is theta it is very clear if we just drop perpendicular from s1 on the line joining s2 and p and let the foot of perpendicular be m now here we have one assumption the separation between the slits is very small and capital d which is the distance of screen from the plane of slit is very very large compared to small d usually the typical values of a capital d are of order of meter and whereas the typical values of small d are of order of millimeter so we can realize that s1 and s2 are really very close now when we drop a perpendicular from s1 to line joining s2 and p that is the point of interest and the foot we are denoting it by m 
then the path difference will be approximately S to M and this is the extra distance travelled by waves from slit S2 S1 and S2 here are acting as a current sources now if a small d is the separation between S1 and S2 so we can easily write from simple geometrical consideration that this path difference will be d sin theta where theta is the angular position of point P now having calculated the path difference between the waves coming from S1 and S2 that is the two slits at general point P now we can find the position of maxima